All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. So as I was saying, we always have to state our restrictions. That's when the denominator equals zero. Now, the new bit of this is extraneous solutions. It's a solution that we'll get for our problems we're going to do. And it's when the solution makes the denominator zero. So we have to watch out for that. That's just something at the end that we're going to have to put. Um, it's still a solution, but we would mark it as an extraneous solution. Okay. So <clears throat> our strategy is to multiply all fractions by the least common denominator. That is going to get rid of all the fractions right off the bat. Because if there is something that all of our denominators will go into, the least common denominator, if we multiply the top parts of the fraction by that value, it's going to cancel out at least part of, well, it'll cancel out all of the denominators. So if that doesn't quite make sense, don't worry about it. Um, our, our process for this, that's our strategy, but our process is to find the least common denominator first. Okay. So how do we find the least common denominator? In this case, we have x, we have 12, we have 3x. Okay. What I always look for is what is the greatest number in there? What is the greatest number? And here, the greatest number is 12. And then I look to see if there's any other numbers. 3, does 3 go into 12? Yeah, 3 times 4. Right. Then, so I know that I know that my least common denominator, I know it's going to have 12 in it. Then I look and see, well, how about the variables? Are there any variables involved? Yeah, there's an X. Would X do it? Would 12X do it? Yeah, because these are just X to the first power. 12X is our least common denominator because X will go into this, 12 will go into this, 3X will go into this. You see, it's just a matter of least common denominator. First, you look for... Um, look for the greatest number, which was 12. And then I look at what degree my, my, my uh, variables are. It's only x to the first power. So 12x to the first power will, um, will work for all three of those denominators. It's the least common denominator. That might take you a little bit of work, but maybe you can look at this one down here and already start to see it, right? Look for the biggest number. Does, do all the numbers work into that? Yeah. Look for the greatest degree value. Does it all go into that? Yeah. Okay. So. I think it's going to be quicker even as we go and find the LCD for this LCD sound system. All right, here we go. So our step is to multiply 12x into all of our fractions. And since it's 12x, it's a, it's a whole value. It's 12x over 1. That's why I'm multiplying it to the numerators. It's not 1 over 12x. I'm not making the denominators more complicated. I'm multiplying something to all of my numerators that will then allow me to cross out portions of the denominator to get rid of all denominators. So that is, uh, let's see. I'm going to really zoom in on this because I wrote it kind of small. Whoa, not microscopic zoom. There we go. All right, look. We have 12x and x. Guess what's going to happen to the x's? x over x is 1, so those are out. You see? It's a nice method, because then we can go through. We know all the denominators will work with this 12x that we multiply to each fraction. So look, 12x and 12, those 12s are gone. Oh, yes, I like it. All right, here it's a little more complicated. Not really. The, the x's are gone. And then it's just a fraction right? It's 12 divided by 3, 12 divided by 3. So we're going to write 4 right here. Okay. Everyone okay with that one step? Maybe that's like the one part that is a little disconnected. But when you get rid of all the variables and you just have, you know, I could have even simplified this and kept the 12 up there. It doesn't matter. It'll be the same thing. Okay. But I had 12 and 3. So I cancel both of those. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So now I end up at my next step. The first fraction, what do we have? 12 times 5. 12 times 5 is 60 minus. Left over in the numerator for the second fraction is 3 times x. 3x equals. We don't have anything in the denominator. That's always the goal. See, yep, 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 all gone. So the 12x is gone. We had 9 times 4, 36. And now I look at that. I'm like, oh, yeah, math 1. Once you did all the work, the second half of this problem is math one-ish. 
Because look at that. We can do that easily. Easily. Minus 60. Minus 60. Negative 3x is equal to, what is that? Negative uh, 24. Negated out that 60. Now we're going to divide by negative 3. Oops. Cancels. Okay. And then we'll go over here. And x is going to be equal to 8. We have to state some restrictions now. Let's look to our original before we canceled everything out. It looks like if we had 0 for x, if we had 0 for x, we would end up with a 0 in the denominator. I should have done that earlier. Actually, I just, I remembered that now. We'll do it for the next one a little earlier. But is this, tell me in the chat, is this an ex, uh, extraneous solution? Just looking back up. What was the extraneous solution? It was when the solution makes the denominator zero. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Is this extraneous? Can we have eight as a value for x? That's, I actually worded that weird. I'll try again on the next one. I'll ask that again the next one. But this is not extraneous. We don't have to write anything extra. The reason it's not extraneous is if x is equal to eight, if we put in x here, or we put 8 for x, that's fine. It doesn't become 0. If we put 8 there, it doesn't become 0. The 12 is going to stay the same. So this is our final answer. x is equal to 8. x cannot equal 0. That's the only restriction. All right. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Hmm. Let's go ahead and move on. Move down then. Here we go. All right, I'm going to do a better job at this one, getting the restrictions right off the bat. We'll get those out of the way. All right. Well, let's go ahead and stay our straight our restrictions over here. Restrictions. We might rewrite it when we get our answer. But what values for x, look, for y, will make us have a zero in the denominator? Somebody tell me in the chat. Y cannot equal what? Yeah, Hunter. Anybody else? I just need two. A, a y cannot equal, thanks, Dave. Y cannot equal zero. Uh, thumbs, hey, guys, give me a thumbs up sideways down for restrictions. Restrictions, finding restrictions, the denominator. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now we want to go in here and we want to find our least common denominator. And looking here, remember, we always look at the numbers first because we're looking between these three denominators. Uh, the number is going to be 2 because 2 and 2. The other numbers, 2 and 2, will go into 2. And then I look at my variables involved. I look at the highest degree. It's to the second power. So if I make this 2 y squared, that's my least common denominator. We don't have to do, so for instance, it's the least because I don't have to make this 2y to the third power because I don't have to accommodate a third power. We always go for the lowest common denominator, looking first at what number is involved, the highest number we take. The other numbers will go into that higher number. I look at the highest degree of my variable. The other variables, if that's the highest degree, will go into that as well. So we know our least, our lowest common denominator. So let's go ahead and put it in here, 2y squared, 2y squared. You're just multiplying everything by 2y squared. This is going to allow us, since it's the lowest common denominator, we will get rid of our, our uh, fractions. All right. Oh, look at the first fraction. The first fraction. This is nice. Now look, 2 over 2 y squared over y squared, 1. So this entire first fraction became 1. Didn't become 0. When you cancel everything out, you're not negating it out. You're not like saying 5 minus 5 to make it 0. This is 2y squared divided by 2y squared. Anything over itself is 1, just a reminder. Now this over here, we have a y in the denominator, a 2y squared in the numerator. So we're going to get rid of one of our y values. It was y squared. 2y squared is 2 times y times y. So when I cancel that out from the y on the bottom, I end up with 2y for the second fraction. 
I like these. This is going quicker. Example three is harder, so we'll get there. Lastly, two on the bottom, two y squared on the top. I'm going to get rid of the twos. And I end up with minus y squared. Interesting. Let me check some real quick. So get down to that. Get down to that point there. And let me go ahead and check one thing in the homework. All right. This one, it's number two. Yep. Huh. One sec. Okay, um, so now we want to go ahead and get another piece of paper. Because we're at this step now, but we still have this y squared on this side. And that kind of makes it a little bit trickier. But let's go ahead and see what happens. Let's go ahead and factor this out. Well, I don't really want to do it that way. Can I do it that way? Minus two. Oh, yeah. Minus two. Yeah, let's do it that way. Instead, I'm going to minus one. Get it over here. We'll do a next method for this. It's the it's the most straightforward way to teach it. So I'm going to go for that. So if I subtract one to both sides, I end up with zero is equal to. Let's put in the order that we know how to deal with. Two y. Minus one. One sec, guys. I don't want to go the wrong route with this. Let me double check that I wrote this problem down right. All right, here we go. So I end up with zero on the left side, which is fine. When I'm solving quadratics, maybe you remember from last year, we would make it equal to zero so that we can find our roots really easily. So watch what we're going to end up with. We end up right here, but the thing is, I can multiply both sides to get this to be a positive y squared. I can multiply both sides by negative one, and it doesn't change the roots that we'll arrive at. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative one. Zero times negative one is zero, and on the right side, we'll end up with this. Now, from here, we're going to do the x, the x trick, the x method. And we'll put in 1. We'll put in negative 2. And then what multiplies to give us 1? You're like, well, 1 and 1. What's the other option? To give us positive 1, we could also have negative 1, negative 1. Ah. And then which one of those adds to give us negative 2? That guy. So we're going to go negative 1, negative 1. Okay. Now that's nice because now look what we have. Oh. Now this is like a math 2 kind of refresh here. Because remember, what we're asking here is... What x values, look, if it equals 0, that means that either this expression is going to be 0, because 0 times anything will give us the 0, or this expression over here is going to be equal to 0, because 0 times anything will give us 0. So all we have to say to find our roots is, we don't have to do this twice because they're identical, but we would say, well, when does this equal 0? That's going to be my solution. That's going to be my root. So this is related to when you guys were doing quadratics last year. I don't know who the teacher most of you had, so you might not remember that clearly. But let's zoom out and see what we did for this problem. We found the least common denominator. We multiplied the numerators by it. That allowed us to reduce to get to this step here. 
we reordered it in our classic trinomial, and then we multiplied both sides by a negative one in order to make our first term here, the negative y squared, make it into y squared. That allowed us to do like a standard trinomial, get into two expressions using the x method. Then you take each of these, we only had to do it once because they're identical, but you take this and you say, well, when does this equal zero? Because zero times anything will give us the zero. Then this equation would remain true. So we set it up, x minus one is equal to zero, add one, and we get x is equal to one. And that is gonna be our answer. And we gotta state our restriction. I'm seeing that I changed it midway to being x, and that's why I have this tape and now it's back to what it was, y. Uh, let's see, we also said y cannot equal zero. And if I plug in one, it's not gonna make any of those zeros, so we don't have to put extraneous, we're done. That was, um, there was a hiccup in there, so I hope that all came together all right for you. All right. I'm guessing some people don't like this step, multiplying by negative one. Just kind of accepted that that's something we can do. If it's an equation, we can multiply both sides of the equation by whatever we want, and we don't change the, the balance of it. And the reason I chose negative one was I wanted to get that negative y squared to just be y squared. So when you multiply both sides by negative, we get here, we can work it out, we can get our answer. All right, you're ready for it. Here it comes. Oh man. Example three. Nah, oh, that's gonna be all right. Because those denominators aren't crazy tricky. It just has a trinomial. Maybe you can already start to factor that trinomial. Get it kind of uh, get it kind of ready for the next step. All right, good. I think you're going to end up with about 20 minutes left to work on homework. So that's a good that's a good amount of time. All right. So let's look at this. Now the least common denominator. Remember, we look at first our our denominators. And we're gonna take the first looking at the numbers involved, the real numbers here, two, four, and two. So I know that I'm look at four and say, do the others go into four? Two goes into four, two goes into four. So we have four as my value. And then I look at the variables. We only have X and they're both X to the first. So four X should take care of everything. Okay, um, next, let's go ahead and rewrite it with that 4x multiplied into all of the numerators. Some of this is really nice. Look at this middle fraction, completely gone. First fraction, four X on the top, two on the bottom. That becomes, the four becomes a two. Because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then I look over here. The x's are going to negate. Or excuse me. They're going to cancel out. They equal 1. x over x is 1. 4 divided by 2. Again, we end up with a 2 on the top. All right. Um, let's take a step back. We have to state a restriction here before we go further. We canceled out some things. But we could see that if x is 0 it's going to make the denominator zero. So let's just go ahead and state that as a restriction. Okay, what's left? 
two X is equal to X squared minus seven X plus 10 minus two times one, two. Yeah, this work. Now let's uh, get everything to one side and combine terms. I'm going to combine these as well, just in one step here. And we'll end up with zero on the left. That's good for our next step. X squared, that's nice. Negative 7x minus 2x is minus 9x. 10 minus 2 is 8. Maybe you could already see it because you know where we're going with this. It's time for the X method. We're going to get this trinomial um, set up equal to zero. Then we can find our roots pretty quick. So let's go ahead and do eight and negative nine. And what multiplies give you eight? Eight times one, four times two. What else? Negative eight, negative one, negative four, negative two. Which one of those adds to give you negative nine? Oh, it's this one. So you see how like this lesson is just combining a bunch of stuff we've practiced before in this unit. You see how it's just kind of building. I feel like if you if you even missed a lot of the other lessons or hadn't focused, uh, you can catch up just from mastering this one lesson. All right. So we'll go ahead and put those roots right in there. These aren't the roots actually. These are these are the expressions here but now we can go ahead and look to see what value for x will make this equal to zero if this expression here equals zero times anything will give us the zero so we can see that x is going to be equal to eight these aren't restrictions because it's not a fraction we've worked up the fractions out of the situation so now when we're finding the roots here we are just saying since it has to equal zero Zero times anything will give you zero. So what value for x makes this equal to zero? That's what we're looking for in this state. Not when we're up here looking for what x cannot be. That's a restriction. These are the roots. Those are the restriction. The roots are what you're looking for. That's the roots. I mean the, the solution. This is the answer here we're finding. So here, x. if x is 1, then that expression is zero. So we get x is equal to 8. x is equal to 1. Let's see if they're extraneous. Put an 8 in there, no problem. Put a 1 up in the beginning here, no problem. So here are our answers. We just have to state our restriction that we found out earlier. x cannot equal 0. And this is the final answer. It has uh, two solutions and one restriction. No extraneous solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Well, let's take a vote. Everyone be up front as possible in the chat or with the icon in the participant link. Thumbs up, sideways, down. How are we feeling? It might be one of those we have to look over more when we go over the homework on Thursday. Uh, we can also do the first problem of the homework. Yeah? Want to try that? Okay, let's do it. So go ahead and take a screenshot of the work. You'll have to piece together where it works, where it fits. But this should, uh... no, hmm. there we go. I'll just, I'll just show the work. Go ahead and screenshot that and you should be able to piece that together with your notes. All right, let's do one of the homework problems. And I gave you, uh, I think, six through, double check. Yeah, I gave you uh, five through 10. So let's look at number five. Huh. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, so we're starting our homework. This is the first problem you'll have to do anyway. I might change this up, guys. These, uh, I'm going to take off one problem. I'll make this five through nine because they do take uh, a fair amount of time. And I'm not sure if that one extra problem, number 10, is useful. All right, we got k squared plus 2k minus 8 over 3k to the third. 
it's equal to 1 over 3k squared plus 1 over k squared. Let me change that right now as you're doing that out. And then I want you to find the least common denominator and go ahead and put it, uh, put the least common denominator uh, in the chat for me. Tell me what that's going to be. What is the lowest common denominator going to be? Not six. First, look at the biggest number. Okay. So my least common, well, first, uh, let's just state what K cannot equal. K can't be zero. That's my restriction. Because look, if you have zero here, you're out. You're out. You're out. You'll have zero in the denominator. There's no other values that make that. Nice, Dave. Perfect. So yeah, perfect. Good. All right, you're going too far with that. Um, you'll see. One sec. So next, let's find our least common denominator. So remember, the least common denominator looks at our denominators. And it wants to find, we want to find the denominator that all of these denominators will go into. Um, either as a, um, as a multiple, we want the, the multiple that works for all of these. Okay, so watch. Well, the way you figure it out is you look to see, well, what is the number? What is the constant? The constant is a 3 and a 3 and a 1. So my lowest common denominator is always going to be, ideally, it's going to be um, the greatest number that you see. There's other more complicated situations, but we're going to start with this approach. So the lowest common denominator is 3. Then I look at my variables, k to the third, k squared, k squared. What value will all of these go into? They'll go into k to the third. So what I'm saying is we are going to end up putting 3k to the third up here, up here, and up here. Because we want to be able to cancel out all the denominators. So the lowest common denominator has to at least be as um, robust as our as our largest term, as our most complicated term. Okay, so now that we have this situation, what we can do is we can multiply all of them by 3k to the third. You see we do it there, 3k to the third, 3k to the third. And this allows us to cancel out. Now I'm going to do one extra step. I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm going to make it in an expanded form because I've taught you it that way. This is 3 times k times k ugh, times k. Sorry, that sucks. k squared plus 2k minus 8. On the bottom, we have 3 and that. And then here we have 3. Man, these are strikes, okay? Okay. I'm just doing this so that you can see that the reason we're going about this is to be able to cancel out as much as we can. Here's our restriction. That's not part of the problem. So let's go in there and cancel out what we can. 3 over 3 is 1. k over k is 1. k over k is 1. k over k is 1. You see, the reason why we chose 3k to the third for our lowest common denominator is because it gets rid of our most robust denominator. It just did. Now the first fraction has no denominator. Here, what do we get? We have 3 over 3 is 1. k over k is 1. k over k is 1. So that just has that k left over. Here, k over k is 1. k over k is 1. If the expand method helps you, keep with it. If it doesn't, there's no need to, to always do it this way. This is just, if you ever forget the rules, you know, what we had left here was like a k. It helps you with the expand method to uh, see what's left over really quickly. 3K. You see, we got all the way there really quick. We got rid of all the denominators. Let's go ahead and before we move anything, let's go ahead and combine these. Okay. Next, let's subtract 
4K, getting everything to one side. Cancels on the right. We get K squared minus 2K minus 8 is equal to 0. Now we're ready to do our X method and find our answers. Now, tell me if you said your sum was thumb was sideways before. Is this next part in finding the solutions the part that's kind of confusing? Because that's just it could have been lost in, in the second semester of math two, it would have been brought up and maybe your teacher didn't get to it. Okay, so it's not your bad. Um, when we have it here, the reason we make it equal to zero is we want to be able to find two expressions that are equal to zero. Because think about this, if this number was eight, if we had eight here, if we had eight here, then this expression has to be equal to zero because eight times zero, that's the only way to get zero. So as we set this up to zero, now we'll do the X method right here for the trinomial. That is going to allow us to convert this trinomial into two quantities that we can then quickly find our solutions. So maybe I just used a lot of new terms you didn't recognize when I was saying roots or those kind of, those kind of terms. But we're still just looking for the solutions. And it comes from that idea that the product of two numbers if it equals zero, when we multiply two values together, one of those values has to be zero for this to work. So that's where we bring this over here from our trinomial. And we say, well, what values multiply to give us negative eight? Let's see, uh, four, negative two, negative four, two, eight, negative one, negative eight, one. That's all. And then which of those combine to give us negative two? Remember, we're multiplying to get here. We're adding to get there. The two numbers are going to be negative 4 and positive 2. So we take those values and put them right here. We've done this step. We've gotten all the way to this step before in factoring using the X method. So if it's the last the last key step here is, is uh, to look and see, well, this is going to be equal to zero. Let's see when this equals zero, because that would satisfy this. No matter what this value is, any value times zero would give us our zero. So this is where, you know, if you couldn't see it, maybe you could see that really easily. You would just ask, when does that happen? And you would also ask, when does that happen? Because those are our two options that will allow us to make those two expressions equal to zero when we multiply them. So let's see what answers we get. X is four, X is negative two. Those are our two possible answers. So you're gonna end up with more than one solution sometimes. And remember that the number of solutions possible is always gonna be the greatest degree in the problem. Here it was a uh, second power, so we can have two solutions. Uh, okay, then we just have to, oh, I see that along the way, I changed it to X's, didn't I? That's okay, I like X's more. So we gotta say as well, our restriction from the beginning, X cannot equal zero. So we end up with that as our, uh, as our answers. Then I changed it back to K. Nah, nah, there we go. All right, give it, give it now, thumbs up, sideways down. Hey, please don't try to like say yes if it's not a yes. If it's still sideways, just let me know. It might even accommodate how I deal with Thursday, how much time we give to these homework problems. How about like on Thursday, we plan on going over all of them. We'll just go over all of them on Thursday. And the thing that we'll do last, the last lesson is so related to this. It's so related to this. So don't, don't worry about it too much, okay? I'm gonna stop the video because that's like 35 minute video. <laughs> it's too long.